Hi everyone, it's Jane. So today's video is going to be in English because it's going to be one of the most important videos I've done to date. I'm going to talk about one of the most common and dangerous misconceptions in the nutrition space. Frankly, one of the most common problems that I see amongst all of my coaching clients, that is that fat is evil. It's bad for our health and it's going to make us gain weight. Okay, this is a topic that I'm highly passionate about and the passion just comes through more naturally when I speak in English. So you guys get to practice your English a little bit. So the idea that fat is evil is false. It's based on very little and very outdated scientific evidence. Dietary fat doesn't raise our cholesterol. It doesn't lead to fatty liver and heart disease. In fact, healthy fats offer protection against these health problems. It is essential for our health. Okay, Healthy fats lower triglycerides. It raises HDL, which is our good cholesterol. Um, it reduces inflammation. It helps to make our blood more slippery, which all reduces the likelihood of artery disease. Hormones are made from protein and fat. So when women go on these restrictive low-fat diets, they often experience irregular menstrual cycles. 60% of our brain is fat, okay? So it's really crucial for our cognition, learned memory, happiness. It helps to prevent neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. Um, it's crucial for maintaining healthy and moisturized skin, hair, and nails. So if your skin's really dry, it's probably because you're not eating enough healthy fats, okay? And on top of that, healthy fats does not lead to weight gain. In fact, Fat actually offers better satiety. It helps to balance our blood sugar and insulin levels, which helps with weight loss. So it all started in the 1950s with seven country studies that was conducted by Dr. Ansel Pease, where he looked at heart disease and diets across different countries. And he noticed that Italians had lower rates of heart disease than Americans, and they ate less animal fat, less saturated fat. So in response, his recommendation was that we all eat less saturated fat. Now, there are key issues with the study. First of all, it was a correlational study, which never equals causation. I mean, in the data, sugar was also correlated with heart disease. And Dr. Keyes himself acknowledged that sugar could have just as well explained the correlation. And the second, that the study made all fats look the same, but in reality, we know that the fat in olive oil and the fat in a bag of potato chips are inherently different and are going to affect our health in different ways, but the study unintentionally made us think that all fats are evil. Now, despite these issues, everyone embraced the idea because it supported the diet heart hypothesis that was really popular at the time. So it was imagined that cholesterol was circulating deposit in the arteries. So we, we have all seen the image in commercials. So you see the fat floating and they start clogging up the arteries that would lead to a heart attack. But in fact, now we know that that's not true. Heart attacks and strokes are actually predominantly caused by inflammation, not just simply high cholesterol. But at the time, Dietitians, doctors, health organizations, journalists, consumer groups, cookbook authors, they all started embracing and promoting this low-fat diet. And before long, the government started supporting it as well. So in 1977, the Dietary Guidelines for Americans recommended that all Americans significantly curb their fat intake. And then in 1984, the National Institute of Health officially recommended that all Americans above the age of two cut their fat intake. And then who could forget the food pyramid that was published in 1992 um, that showed that oils and fats should be used very sparingly at the top of the pyramid and that the majority of our diet should come from carbs. I mean, it's no wonder that obesity rates skyrocketed after that. And then after that, of course, the food industry followed suit. They started producing all these low-fat food products. They took out the fat and then replaced it with sugar, trans fats, and other really toxic ingredients. Um, and they poured considerable advertising dollars into continuing to promote the idea that less fat is better for you so that they can sell these products. Um, and recent exposés have actually shown that the sugar industry gave researchers money in the 1960s to downplay the link between sugar and heart disease and continue to promote fat as the real culprit. Despite the fact that following the original study, none of the new studies supported these recommendations. The NIH actually spent hundreds of million dollars trying to prove the link between eating fat and getting heart disease and completely failed. But the low fat campaign was so powerful at the time that to come out with a different point of view was considered heresy. I mean, when Dr. Atkins came out with his original uh, high protein, low carb diet in the 1970s and when the keto diet started catching on, uh, they were ridiculed by media, by the medical community for decades up until very, very recently. Now, the tide finally began to change in the 1990s when researchers realized that trans fats were really bad for us. We started avoiding trans fats, countries started banning them, and that actually led to a broader reevaluation of all of our previous research on dietary fat. So researchers started to remove the effects of trans fats from their data, and the data that they were left with consistently showed that high dietary fat intake was not harmful for health. 
And the idea that it causes weight gain, that never had any scientific evidence ever. It was literally thrown in because it was intuitive. It was straightforward. Eat fat, gain fat. I mean, we're already blaming fat for heart disease. Why not throw in obesity as well? Any respectable medical professional today, doctor, nutritionist, health coaches, anyone who's up to date on the latest science knows what they're talking about is first of all going to tell you that fat is not the problem. Second, they're going to encourage you to eat more healthy fats and three, to eat less sugar. So what does it mean for you guys? Can you start eating your seed junk food? <laughs> well, not necessarily. So not all fats are created equally. Um, we still need to avoid the unhealthy fats like trans fats and hydrogenated oils, highly processed oils like soybean, corn, safflower, cottonseed. These are commonly used in packaged foods. They're highly inflammatory, harmful for our health and can lead to weight gain. But we need to eat a lot more healthy fats like omega three, and fish, nuts, seeds, saturated fats, and olive oils, avocados. You guys don't eat enough of that. You're absolutely avoiding it, which is why I keep on harping this point on my blog. Please stop avoiding healthy fats. Please eat more of it. It's so important for your health.